So you have to write a conclusion and you don't know what to do. Reality check. Conclusions are really hard. Well, for starters, you're dog tired. You've said all that you needed to say, you've made your argument, you supported it, and you tied it all together. What more do these people want from you? And what's worse, conclusions are super awkward. Nobody likes conclusions. Well, almost nobody. It's like if you've ever been at a party and you don't really know when to leave. Like, do I leave early, but then people will think I'm being all abrupt? Or do I stay around late, but then what if I'm that random person who's lingering? That's sort of the predicament of the conclusion. And you've got to exit gracefully for your paper to end well. So let's talk about your grand exit. Where the job of the introduction was to establish common ground with the reader, the job of the conclusion is to make your argument resonate. You have to answer the so what question. Why should we care about what you've just written? And where the introduction was the funnel, starting with the real world hook and moving to the thesis, the conclusion is an upside down funnel, starting with the thesis and working out to the broader real world implications. The intro and the conclusion have the effect of bookending your paper. And if you can remember what went into your intro, you can figure out what to put in your conclusion. On the left is that familiar intro funnel. And on the right, we're going to go ahead and build out our conclusion funnel. The first step of the conclusion is to restate the thesis statement in fresh words. You've just spent the last few pages breaking the argument down into little bits. It's time to remind your reader what your complete argument was. Your next step is to revisit your main points, again using fresh words. This is usually just a review of your topic sentences. Then your task is to start to zoom out to the bigger picture or broader implications. In the intro, you explained how your real-world hook related to your text and to your argument. Now in the conclusion, you need to explain how your argument and text relate to the real world. It's like a reverse explain and relate. Finally, you tie back to the hook and close with an insightful last line to ponder, your kicker. Tie a ribbon around that package. Connect back to that opening image or anecdote, whatever captivated your reader's attention at the start. Touch back to that in your closing. When we talked about hooks that work, the tough part was finding that anecdote, statistic, historical example, current event, or metaphor that would connect the reader and draw the reader in. Now the challenge is to leave the reader thinking to switch on that light bulb and make your reader say, hey, this is really interesting and important. So how do we spark those light bulb moments? Well, by playing the so what game. So grab your book, find a friend, and talk it out until you have your answer. Remember our example from the flowers, we're gonna try playing the so what game with that. Basically, I'm just saying that my app had to grow up quickly. So what? Well, it's important because it was caused by her realization that society was corrupt. Why should anybody care? That's important because adults create the world that kids grow up in, and it's the responsibility of the adults to be kind and promote equality so that they don't corrupt the children and ruin the next generation. So, what's Walker's point for us? There are lasting consequences to our actions. How we behave impacts people well beyond those involved in the immediate problem. There's our so what. And now that we figured it out, Let's think through the parts again and write our concluding paragraph. In the introduction, my thesis statement was, through the symbol of the flowers, Walker reveals that once a child has witnessed cruelty and hatred, innocence is forever lost. And I need to restate this in fresh words. So here we go. By depicting Myop's evolving relationship with the flowers, Walker underscores how experiencing the viciousness of the adult world signals the end of childhood. Next step, I need to synthesize and summarize my main points. Usually this is a review of the topic sentences, but since I'm working with just one paragraph, we'll review the main points of my paragraph. Mayop begins her day as a carefree young girl playing out in the woods and gathering flowers. However, once she realizes that the dead man she encounters has been lynched, she lays down her flowers, signaling her transition from childhood to adulthood. My next task is to discuss the so what in my essay. Why would Walker bother to write this story and how does it relate to us today? Maybe her message is that life shouldn't be this way, that adults shouldn't have the power to wreck an entire childhood, or that they should be more pure and innocent and kind like children are. 
I'm going to have to transition from what I have so far to get to where I need to go. The catalyst for MyOps transformation is neither positive nor natural. That's my transition. She is unsuspectingly thrust into the realities of a world filled with hate, and it is this experience that robs her of her childhood. Walker criticizes the vices of the adult world, exposing how the actions of adults who should know better and act more justly have permanent and painful effects on the next generation. Finally, I know I need to leave the reader thinking, and ideally, I'll weave back my hook when I write my kicker. So Ruby Bridges certainly had a lot had to learn this life lesson the hard way. I bet we could tie back to her in the kicker. So here we have it. Perhaps the lesson of Myop's horrifying walk into adulthood and Ruby Bridges' painful path through prejudice serve to remind adults to consider the legacy they wish to leave behind. All right, guys, I hope that's helpful to you. That's a quick overview of conclusions. Don't forget to consult the primer for more help.